Well, welcome. I'm going to start now more sort of formally at this point. Um, it is very much my pleasure uh, as the um, uh, director of the Institute of Advanced Studies to uh, be introducing this seminar session today. And I really am thrilled that people have uh, joined us online and that Kermit has made time for us online as well. Um, after, after what we, we have found was not that fraught, but not that perfect to flight home either um, from Loughborough. So, uh, but it was most delightful to see you again. Uh, Kermit Davis is professor of the College of Medicine at the University of Cincinnati, where he is also the section chief of environmental and public health sciences an expert in the impact of workplace stressors on both the physical and mental health and well-being of employees. Professor Davis has an impressive list of publications focused both on industrial medicine as well as human factors design and ergonomics. In 2018, Professor Davis joined the IAS as a short-term IAS visiting fellow working with Mike Frey at the School of Design and Creative Arts and in this past year following COVID delays, um, and, and we are very thrilled that uh, the COVID delays eventually began to unfold, um, joined uh, the School of Design and Creative Arts, um, uh, hosted uh, as a Fulbright Fellow, where he's been working on, as you can see on the screen, questions around home health care, and particularly the future of healthcare. Uh, we were also delighted that as a Fulbright Fellow, we were able to become reacquainted at the IAS with Kermit and especially to see him um, around and about uh, during the IAS Festival of Ideas this May, um, where he, he was very much part of a whole range of interesting dialogues and conversations with other fellows, um, many of whom commented on um, uh, having, having been really pleased to get a chance to meet him. And uh, we hope that those conversations will continue at some point in the future. So today we are very host, uh, pleased to host him as he updates us all on the results of what we think was a remarkably productive time at LU. Kermit, if I can turn over to you. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, it is, uh, I, I am getting into that period of time where I'm, you know, I'm still like uh, adjusting to the U.S., but uh, longing to, to the time that I you know, was uh, in the U.K. and all my weekend uh, ventures um, that I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but I will be talking about home health care. Um, and, and this is something that's, uh, you know, somewhat near and dear to me. Um, and uh, because it's 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 a, a sector of, of healthcare that is so fast and rapidly growing um, that uh, you know that oftentimes we're not giving the resources to these individuals that work in the home healthcare arena, like uh, we do with hospitals and, and long term care facilities. Um, if you look at uh, uh, home healthcare, it's the fastest growing sector. Um, you know, currently in the United States, there's about 2 million uh, workers, uh, but that's going through rapid growth, um, both in the nurses as well as um, nurses' aides. Um, and what you find here is, is a couple of reasons why there's such rapid growth. Um, first, uh, we're getting an aging population. Uh, you know, we have the baby boomers going through uh, retirement age and moving into extended uh, ages. Um, and, and oftentimes these individuals are living to be a, a lot older um, because we're getting much better at treating chronic illnesses. Um, and, and many times uh, these chronic illnesses are, are not necessarily death sentences, sentences like they used to be, but something that would be, you know, something that needs to care for many, many years. Um, and so one of the things that happens when you have this um, and, and, and also impacted by COVID uh, is you, you don't want to live in, in long-term care facilities. Hospitals don't want you involved in the hospital. As, it's as quick as turn around to get you out of the hospital, which means you transition into your home and you need individuals to come in, nurses, nurses, aides to come into your home environment and help treat you, help do very da daily activities oftentimes. Um, we'll get into that, uh, what they actually are involved in. But this is a, a, a sector that, that has continued to expand. And I think as, as it becomes more popular, it's just going to 
become even more impactful um, in, in, in the everyday lives of, of older individuals as they um, progress in, in their health disabilities. It is a very unique environment. Um, if you look at uh, you know what, what home health care workers have to deal with is they go into multiple homes throughout the day, uh, which means it's a unique setup each home. You know, you, it's not like a hospital where you go into four or five, six rooms. They're all laid out exactly the same way. Every home is 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 set up differently. Um, you know, it's where the patient is located. Um, the arrangement of the in within the house can be totally different. Um, and then there's many other factors about how how the the caregiver interacts with with the patient. Um, you know, yeah, one of the biggest things that we'll talk about some of the differences is, is you know, you have to drive to, to different homes. And like I said, you're going to anywhere from six to eight homes a day. Um, and, you know, you have many different exposures throughout that day. Um, you know, the other aspect of this is that, you know, those exposures change throughout the day and throughout the seasons um, are, you know, certainly impacted. Uh, you know, I when I was in the, in the UK, it certainly was uh, evident that uh, you know you, you go through the the spring uh, in the in the February March and it just downpoured every day, um, so that poses uh, you know issues for for home healthcare people, um, and then you get into the summer and obviously you have ex you know exceedingly hot days um, like ex like I experienced um, on the hottest day uh, ever uh, for UK um, and, and so there's issues there with environmental issues. It's also a, a very unique environment because uh, you can have secondhand smoke. Um, you know, there, there's no laws in, in the United States or the UK that restricts, uh, you know, smoking in, in their own homes. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we found in the States was uh, that, you know, you have individuals, you have patients, as bad as that is, that continue to smoke, relatives that, that uh, are free to smoke um, throughout the, 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 the day. And if you're there for an hour, a couple hours, um, you're going to get ex excessive uh, uh, exposure to secondhand smoke. The other unique aspect of, of uh, the work environments is uh, pests and pets. Um, you know that that, that that oftentimes the pets um, are are in the room. Um, you know which which increases the the potential for bites, tripping hazards, um, which you don't again typically have in long term care facilities uh, or hospitals. Um, another big prevalence of 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 issues is pests uh, in the United States. Um, I, I, we're still I'm still trying to figure out if this is a prevalence that you see in the United Kingdom. Uh, but the cockroaches and bed bugs are another issue that you, they have to deal with oftentimes. Um, and in both of these, you know, these type of pests, you have to worry about taking them to the next place. Um, so the worst thing that could happen is a caregiver goes to one home, gets exposed to them, and the bed bugs get into their their equipment, um, and they take them to the next home, and then they end up getting bed bugs and, and cockroaches. So you have to be very diligent when a house has um, these types of pests involved in in, in their uh, environment. Um, and you know, oftentimes what happens is these workers tend to be, become one-handed workers because if you have to hold equipment or uh, even electronic recording devices or any type of de recording devices that that's, um, you know, you're charting the, the treatments and, and all that, you have to you know, hold that in one arm and you're treating in with, with the other arm and doing all the activities. So that you oftentimes end up with a one-handed worker, which is certainly not a good thing. Another unique part of the, the environment is, you know, you have to drive up to, um, to, to the, from, from homes, um, which means that uh, you have to ingress and egress the, the home. Um, and what that means is, you know, supplies and equipment are often in vehicles. 
Um, so you're carrying all the equipment into the, the home um, is what we found. Uh, you also have to deal with the environmental factors, like I said, the rain, the snow, uh, the various types of, of uh, heat, um, especially with climate change, uh, that they'll have to deal with with going in and out of the, of the homes. Uh, so this, again, you're doing this multiple times. Um, I'll show you some of the uh, information about uh, you know going in and out of the house in a few minutes here. Uh, in the United States, you also have a lot of violence. Um, you have, you know, high crime areas, you know, these workers go to their homes, which is wherever their homes are. Um, oftentimes, this could be uh, somewhere in the, uh, you know, high crime areas. It could be um, in, in a, a, you know, an apartment complex. It could be in multiple areas. Um, and, and so they have to deal with with crimes and, and, and potential violence. Um, and, and, you know, this was was really evident during the opioid crises that we've had in the United States, where you have um, people seeing, oh, it's a nurse. They probably have opioids on them. Well, they don't carry opioids, um, any type of, you know, uh, Oxycontin or anything like that on them. So they don't have them, but that doesn't mean they're not going to get um, you know, held up or uh, have violence put onto them, trying to get uh, drugs for, from them. Um, but oftentimes, um, you know, the other aspect of this is with dementia and Alzheimer's, uh, there are, you know, these patients can be in altered mental states. Uh, they can become, you know, both uh, verbally uh, abusive, um, sexually abused uh, with respect to, you know, inappropriate touching, um, as well as, uh, you know, um, physical, you know, uh, 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 violence that, that can come about uh, when a, a person has a mental state that's not necessarily all there, um, that can cause people to end up, um, you know, pushing out and, and, and thrashing about um, when when they don't understand things. Um, and in the States, uh, you know, one of the things that we see is patient handling. Um, you know, you're, you're going to a house by yourself, uh, so there's no one to help you to move the patient. At best, you might get a, a, a non-professional caregiver to help move the patient. Uh, and in, in most cases, uh, there's no available equipment, no lifts, the, no safe patient handling equipment. Um, and, and in many cases, this is, is detrimental to the, the caregiver, particularly the nurses' aides, which are, are oftentimes dealing with, um, you know, the care, um, not as much as medical treatment. Um, and, and that re results in, in moving of the patient um, and, and, can, and can be really detrimental, uh, you know. It, it, when we, we did our uh, surveys and interviews, um, one of the things that you saw is the number of times that they they do move. Um, and, and like I said, it's the health aides that really were were moving patients. Um, and 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 what you you see here is that you know they're moving them in and out of uh, chairs, they're moving them off the bed, they're moving them to the toilet. Um, and oftentimes, you know, these are, are multiple times throughout the day, throughout the, a visit that they're, they're having to do that. Um, and and, and the, the predominantly that requires a patient um, to be moved, you know, just for, for the care, mobility, um, to, to keep them uh, healthy. Uh, but that translates into the, the caregivers, um, you know, getting a lot of stress because they're not provided with lifts. Um, especially in, in many cases that these, you know, obesity is, is starting to creep in um, to the, you know, major health issues um, where, you know, severe mor 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 morbid obesity um, can, can really cause these issues. And, you know, there's just not a physical way to move patients um, safely. Oops. Uh, the next part of it is, is, as you see that, you know, Caregivers, aides particularly, do a lot of um, additional um, care, bathing um, a client, uh, getting them dressed, uh, cha changing the bedding, um, changing dressings, um, you know, those type of things that often happens with caring of the patient. And then other tasks that, that also happens um, is, uh, you, you know, you, you, what, what you see is, is um, you know, getting medical equipment from the, the cars, 
uh, as I said, you know, is tr is traditionally more the nurses that have to because they bring in and treat the the patients more. Um, but you know, walking to and from the the, the home um, to 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 get the equipment and to get uh, other types of treatment uh, materials and supplies. Uh, requires them to, um, you know, oftentimes come in and out of the house. Um, so one of the big things is, as you see, there's lots of exposures um, that that are occurring, and, um, and and they're unique exposures because you know often many of these exposures you wouldn't see in a hospital. Some of them or a long-term care facility. Some of them you do uh, have the potential in both. You know, you do have violence in, in both cases or all the cases of all healthcare. Um, you know, they deal with that oftentimes, um, but you do have these very unique exposures also. So when, when we set this project up, you know, the, the, the question became, you know, what could be different between the UK and the United States? Um, all the results I presented was really before about um, you know the differences that could could happen, um, and and through my discussions with with many individuals um, within the the home healthcare um, uh, sector in in the UK, um, you know one of the big things is you know it was very easily to to, to see um, it was smaller homes. Um, and so that could be, you know, less space maneuver patients, you know, could be more crowded. And, and one thing with, with home health care, you know, one of the keys you, oftentimes is, is that individuals get placed um, on, a, uh, on a bed, a hospital bed or on, on a, a, a normal bed, but it's usually put into their living space. So oftentimes you're having other furniture around them because you want to be by your, you know, your, your, um, your loved one. Um, during the day and, and, and interact with them and not be up in their bedroom and that type of thing. So oftentimes, you know, the, the default is to put them in living spaces, um, which means that, that that gets pretty crowded, um, I think, with, with, with potentially with the smaller homes. Um, the, the smaller homes also impact, uh, you know, the aerosol exposures that you have um and uh you know other types of, of environmental factors um just because of the the the, the um the, the smallness of, of of the homes one of the other things is that that was noticeable is having multiple floors you know three two to three floors of steps um that you have to migrate up and down um and, and move um you know the equipment so you're carrying things a lot farther um, another thing that was obvious um, throughout the, the, the communications that I had um, was more safe patient handling equipment. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that this was really part of the, the overall system um, throughout the UK of, of making sure that the caregivers have proper safe patient handling equipment, where you don't see that over um, in, the, in the United States. Part of that is the, the assurance um, in, in the healthcare system that that's implemented the differences between the the, the countries. Um, one of the big things is, is also um, you know it was common to hear um, you know individuals say exposure to to seeing guns in in the homes um, you know in the United States and, and it seems like this is not a, any type of issue. And actually, when we were talking about and vetting the uh, survey that this was one of the things that was talked about being removed, but we um, we we left it in there to, to make sure that uh, we end up um, you know capturing what that that there really isn't this issue. Um, and then finally, you know, obviously talking um, you know to the individuals is the different in healthcare and you know the healthcare insurance versus the the overall. Um, uh, health care system that you have in the United Kingdom and England um, is, is very different uh, between the, two, the countries. Um, typically what happens is, uh, the, you know, coming out of the hospital or, or um, initially uh, individuals would go, um, would be under, you know, the hospital uh, home health care. Then it translates into the council um, health care, and then it goes to uh, HSE um, at the end, um, when it gets into hospice care, so there's a transition of who's in charge of the care 
um, that could happen throughout um, that makes it more complicated on 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 the exposures um, and and who's in, you know who's in charge and what type of of uh, interventions and 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 um, and, and, that, and alike that 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 happens there. So one of the things that we were trying to do um, when we set this project up was um, to to conduct a survey um, of home health care workers. Um, to be able to compare and contrast uh, what was found in the United States to to really understand, you know, is this are certain things universal with home health care, or are there certain unique aspects of it? Um, you know, we use a, a, a similar survey that we we've used in the United States over here on, in my research, and we basically um, it did some modifications with wording. Um, but really, in essence, had the same content on, on an online survey. Um, and then we started um, rolling this out uh, and uh, started recruiting. Um, we're in the process of that, and we're continuing that. Uh, we've had uh, several uh, agencies soliciting, um, but, you know, the the response has been very underwhelming <laughs> um so far uh and and so you know i think what I, I i think might need to be done is some type of incentive that we can um incentivize to, to get uh individuals to complete these um you know one of the things that i've learned over the years and in, in this project is you, you never know how data collection is going to go um you know it, it oftentimes it could be um you know, smooth sailing, you get all the, the people to, to, to uh, reply to your survey. Um, but in this case, um, I did a lot of contact with many agencies, uh, but the, the uh, response rate was very d dismal. And uh, we, we, we've continued to, to, to fight with that. But, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, this is just something that you have to, to, to kind of do. Um, so the survey is still ongoing. Um, we're, we're trying to, to um, get get more individuals to, to complete it, um, and, and hopefully in, in the near future we'll have some of the results on that. Again, it's it's one of those things with re research; you just never know how long it's going to take with uh, a short period of time of what I was in the in the country. We're also doing some additional steps. Um, you know, one of the things that we're we're doing over in, in the here is actually going in and observing. So the first the survey is really about the perceptions of the workers um, in their environment, and that they, um, you know, that, that they're you know we we don't actually know for sure how much how accurate that is, um, how often that they they encounter each of the exposures. Or actually do a task, but what we, we we've done um, is created a checklist um, where we can um, you know go in and observe uh, the, the caregivers in each of the homes. The other thing is is we don't know how variability um, is from home to home on on these different exposures. Um, so we're we're now um, venturing into a, a, a second phase. Um, which is looking at the measures of, of, of objectively a checklist of, of quantifying how often they're they're exposed to each one of these in each of the homes, um, and we've established uh, several contacts um, that will conduct these observations for us um, using a checklist. Uh, they've done uh, this type of observations for other type of of exposure assessments and and uh, health assessments. Um, but you know what we're really looking at is is to follow a a, a nurse or a nurse's aide um, for an entire shift and go into those multiple homes and, and look at all the different exposures that they have um, and and tasks that they they complete the number of times they go in and out of the home all these type of things uh, and, and get sort of a pilot data um, is is what we're targeting um, that this is uh, you know with with uh, Holidays, um, vacations, and um, and and, uh, and and now with the the, the Queen's death, um, being you know many things have been shut down. So um, this is going to roll out um, probably in October timeframe for that. So you know one of the, this, the great thing about this experience um, in my time there is you know we've done a lot of the the groundwork, um, but you know it it just 
didn't work out on timing wise on getting a lot of this done, but we continue to work um, on, on both of these projects uh, moving forward and expect them to, to still be completed. So, um, which leads me to the, the one thing that we really have um, completed um, is a literature review, um, looking at the effectiveness of safe patient handling equipment and techniques, um, look, investigating uh, biomechanical studies, um, uh, apologize, I got a typo. Um, there's no targeting of, of caregivers. Uh, but you know, we, we reviewed um, papers uh, published uh, after um, 1980, um, so roughly 23 years of, of, of papers in peer reviewed journals and English uh, 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 journals. Um, we have, have identified um, and analyzed and evaluated 50 articles that were included. Uh, we had numerous other ones that uh, didn't fit, didn't fit our, 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 our uh, uh, inclusion criteria. Um, and mainly a lot of them um, we didn't include uh, looking at uh, injury rates and an impact on, on, on non-biomechanical uh, assessments. Um, we also then did a quality assessment of the methods uh, to make sure that you know we could get an idea of, of how how much good good papers we had versus uh, you know marginal uh, studies um, and, and really looked at the difference in, in the quality of, of of the variability within the quality of the papers. We will you know one of the things that we did find was you know being my biomechanical oriented most of the studies um about 80 percent uh were laboratory studies uh there were uh, a few um studies uh that that uh were both uh about another i say about 15 percent and then there was about five five to eight percent um uh, uh roughly uh that were um uh, both, or sorry, in the field type of, of studies where they actually went out and they measured um, various biomechanical outcomes. The next one slide here is just kind of a summary of, uh, you know, the results. Uh, and, and basically what you look here is, is um, you know, how each of these uh, techniques gets to um, just you know, looking at manual lifting um, in comparison to it. And so anywhere you see a green um, is telling you that, that that's a, a benefit. Um, and if you look at these, um, you know, you do see some studies showing there's a benefit of, of proper lifting. Um, but I, and, uh, and, and then you, and I'll go through each of these and a little more of what the takeaways are. But you also see a lot of them, no differences. And then you see a few that actually increase, um, about four uh, studies that saw increase in, in actual loading um, on those. And so if you look at all of this, this is giving you a, a pretty good indication of, um, you know, of, of where the state of, of, of the science is. But, it, but one of the things you can really point out from this, this table is, there's not a, a, a you know an overwhelming number of, of studies that that uh, are each in each of these these uh, cells, um, so there's much work that needs still to be done um, to verify and to you know get a, a better idea of, of these different uh, types of, of interventions and uh, and, and equipment um, as we move forward. So I do have some take home points for this review. Um, you know, proper lifting was effective in reducing some of the uh, biomechanical loads in many of the studies. Um, but one of the biggest things that we really identified was um, that these were under uh, perfect conditions, um, that, you know, the, the patients were compliant, they were in laboratory studies that, you, you know, you, you oftentimes uh, had patients that were not obese, that, that they were, you know, off, you know, small petite individuals, um, and, and uh, you know, and that uh, you know you didn't have fatigue throughout the day with proper lifting, which would would really have um, uh, an impact on, on on proper lifting. And if and, and if you look at the literature of, of sort of the injury, proper lifting has not been shown to be really effective in the long term of reducing injuries. Um, and and then really what that's you know 
if you look at it, you know, in most cases, you know, 25 pounds is a really good indicator of what what is safe to routinely lift. Um, and and if you think about it, how many patients are actually um, actually uh, you know under 25 pounds or even 50 pounds? You know, you can even raise it up to to a, a, a higher level. Most patients are going to be 100 pounds to, to to 150 to 200 pounds. Um, and even if they have, you know, good mobility and, and can take some of that load off, you're moving, you know, significant amounts of, of weight. And so there's not really any time that, that proper lifting can be effective, um, truly, to, to reduce the biomechanical loads under those types of conditions. Uh, you know, as you start looking um, into... Uh, you know, the slide boards and rolling boards. So these are, are boards that um, are put under a uh, patient to, to help um, slide and reduce um, potential friction. Um, and, you know, the, the roller boards are, are uh, usually are, are hard boards that are covered with a, a like a, a frictionless um, uh, cloth that, that rolls around the, the board that kind of creates a roller. Um, again, it, 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 it it targets reduction of, of friction, um, but you still have to, you know, oftentimes, uh, you know, lift significant amount of body weight when you when you're transitioning this. Um, and in most cases, these boards can only be done uh, used um, in in lateral transfers. The the, um, the roller boards are lateral transfer de devices, and then slide boards that can be used for either lateral transfer transfers or repositioning, um, and and. But in one case, you know, these could be effective for assisting, um, uh, you know, home healthcare workers that that have no um, assistance at all. Um, you know, sort of the worst case um, of benefit um, with a relatively inexpensive intervention. You know, similarly, uh, you know, the gait and walk walking belts. These are belts that are put around um, a patient. Um, and what it really does is, is creates handles um, for uh, you know the caregiver to, to do it. Um, same concerns with the proper lifting technique um, with respect to a compliant patient. Um, and you know, you know, it, you know, if if you have any type of risk of falls, those type of things can really it, you know can elevate the the risk in the biomechanics. Because if somebody goes limp and they fall towards it, you're you're trying to make sure that they don't end up on the floor, um, which you know can be trained to to minimize, but you know it still creates a a, a real um, you know potential uh, risk in of, of injury um, is, is with with par caregivers. Again, if you look at overall the mix, they're very mixed results um, and most likely indicating a, not really a viable intervention. Uh, these are, again, are, are, are really only used for tra patient transfers. Um, and so they're, they're also limited in the, you know, what they can uh, be used for. Again, with similar slide boards, uh, friction reducing uh, sheets, um, or even a, a plastic uh, garbage bag were used. Um, you know, oftentimes they're they're again uh, re reducing the friction between the patient and the 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 the, the, be the, the bed. Um, they, you know, many studies showed reduction of hand forces, and muscle activity, but that and, and and some showed some decreases in in, in biomechanical loading, the spinal loads, and moments. Um, so there is some utility with these devices, um, but they can really, only, again, only be used for lateral transfers and repositioning. Um, and then in addition, uh, air assist devices have been shown to be one of the more effective, uh, reducing the bio biomechanical uh, stress. Um, it, it, you know, the, the, there was a, a, a vast majority of the studies showed that uh, there was reductions in, in the uh, outcomes. Um, and, but again, these are, uh, you know, can only be used for lateral transfers and repositioning. Um, and, and one of the big drawbacks of these devices, as well as the, the, the uh, slide boards and the uh, frictionless um, uh, sheets, 
you have to be able to get these devices under the patient, um, which then also requires, you know, significant force to turn them and, um, and, and get the devices under the patient. So um, that's a, 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 a significant uh, concern also. Whoops. Um, so one of the, uh, you know, the next, um, you know, the final one is, is mechanical lifts. And these were very effective in reducing biomechanical um, outcomes, the spinal loads and the, uh, the, the, the trunk moments, the, 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 the real concerns of, of the loads on the joints. Um, and, and what you find also is, is you know, ceiling lifts are, are um, uh, you know, more effective than floor lifts. But you know, ceiling lifts require um, you know significantly more infrastructure costs uh, because you have to have ceilings that can you know hold up uh, the lifts as well as the patient's um, weight. Uh, so moving them around is is, is a concern. Um, they're limited in 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 the areas that that uh, you know that you can move, maneuver where a floor lift can move, maneuver any almost anywhere. So there's some trade-offs on there, those type of things. But they do have the ability to do all patient handling tasks, um, repositioning, lateral transfers, um, lifting, trans, you know, lifting them in and out of beds. So these are are certainly things that that are going to benefit. Um, but there are some concerns with uh, usability and, um, uh, you know, oftentimes uh, the perceptions of, of, of nurses um, to, to go and get the, the, um, the, the, the slings as well as the devices, the lifts, um, oftentimes um, impact the actual utilization of these. Um, so th that's some concerns. But basically, if you look at this li li literature review, um, you know that, that you know a couple things really stand out. Um, one is I think that uh, you know there's still a lot to be done on on evidence um, that that uh, the mechanical lifts are are, are probably the, the ones that have been most effective in reducing uh, the biomechanical outcomes. Uh, followed by air-assisted devices and uh, uh, frictionless uh, sheets, um, and then poor. Uh, proper lifting um, uh, techniques is, is only going to give you marginal benefit um, at best um, in, in protecting uh, the, the caregivers. And so if you look at sort of what my my six plus months of, of, of uh, interactions and uh, and uh, as, as well as my my, my stay, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about, you know, this in a second, but, you know, the research component of this, you know, you know, we, certainly um, home health care is the future of, of, of health care, um, you know, and, and that there's, you know, a, a significant number of exposures at each home, which each is, um, uh, is, you know, each home is its own unique um, workplace. Uh, you go to multiple ones each day. Uh, which means you're going to have a, a numerous types of exposures that are changing throughout the day, which makes it difficult to have interventions um, for them. Um, and that this is a fastest growing uh, area, both in, in the UK and um, in the United States. Um, you know, we, we are starting, you know, are, are in the, the middle of, of our two uh, studies of, of surveys and observations. Um, and you know that should provide us some insights into differences and similarities between the, the two countries. Um, and then you know one of the big things also that we accomplished was a literature review that indicates you know lifts were were the best intervention uh, for safe patient handling. Um, and then just to kind of wrap things up, uh, you know I, I kind of looked back at the the uh, the time that I was in. Um, Loughborough, and you know, I I, I really uh, uh, you know had a, a, an amazing time. It was an experience of a lifetime. I met uh, many collaborators that both current and future. I really want to have a shout out to Mike Fry, who made my uh, life and uh, experience even more um, 
uh, to a whole nother level with all the interactions and um, as well as just the experiences that, that he provided me, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, the couple of Friday nights at the pubs, different beers to, to, um, uh, to lower tier football games, to um, just recommending um, various culture places throughout the United Kingdom. Um, I was able to, you know, experience the, the, the country um, with a, a very deep dive, um, both into um, the many places that I visited. Uh, most weekends, uh, I, I traveled around. Uh, it might be a day trip, it might be an overnight trip, but I really tried to make do that. Um, you know, I, I also set up a, um, you, you know, in, in the design school, uh, they were going to put me in a um, an office back in the you know, in 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 a in a office back in off off the the main area, and I said no, I want to be out in the middle. So they put me at the computer station where everybody walked by, and I got tremendous interactions throughout the day when um, and and throughout throughout the time, and got to meet you know many more people by doing it this way. And I can't say enough with all the individuals in in the area of the design school. Um, all the faculty and staff that made my um, visit uh, just an amazing experience. Um, there was also, you know, I, I want to give a shout out to Fulbright, um, and, and I would recommend anybody um, to to look into to having um, this experience, um, whether it's coming to the United States or to another country. Um, but you know, this really uh, was an experience that uh, was is eye opening uh, re region. Regenerated a lot of my research um, uh, juices to get, get going back into um, deeper dives, um, and you know, and and also get to thinking, um, you know, uh, on bigger uh, problems than you know just home health care or my own little uh, bubble, um, because you know there was a couple of events that uh, was sponsored by Fulbright that you'd go and and, and do big problems. Um, when we were in Wales, uh, we did wicked problems, um, which was addressing the wicked uh, problems that that, that uh, the Wales, um, in particular Cardiff, uh, was uh, dealing with, and so try to solve those problems. Not not necessarily solve, but provide feedback on w things to think about, and and just looking at it in different ways. And then in in Sheffield, uh, there was a you know a, a a week there where they they talked about uh, the, you know climate change and what we really need to do to impact that to to make it a um, a, a more feasible way to, to 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 actually fix it fix the problem of climate change, which was another eye opening experience. And then just the interaction with all the um, Fulbright scholars and and the researchers. Um, truly, it, it, it was amazing, and, and I want to, th you know, um, you know, thank the Institute of Advanced Studies for my time and the interactions I was able to have with the various events, and as well as the, um, you know, the coffee uh, breaks, um, which you know were scheduled for an hour, and typically were taking two hours um, by the time I left. So there were some amazing times, and with that, I would open it up to any questions.